According to current trends and social ideologies, one might think that our Creator, Yahweh Elohim of Israel, only wants the world to be filled with love and peace and no more war. While that's an eventuality, until then, war is a given. Now, this Barry Phillips was 10 minutes toward day five of Shuv Team Judges, and we are in Devarim, Deuteronomy, chapter number 20. Verse 1 and following says, When you go out to battle against your enemies and shall see horses and chariots and people more numerous than you, do not be afraid of them. For Yahweh your Elohim has brought you up from the land of Mitzrayim, and he is with you. And it shall be when you draw near to the battle that the priest shall come and speak to the people and shall say to them, Hear, O Israel, you are drawing near today to battle with your enemies. Do not let your heart faint. Do not fear or tremble or be afraid before them. For Yahweh your Elohim is he who goes out with you to fight for you against your enemies to save you. Now, what follows are various scenarios where uh, if you have planted a vineyard and haven't drank from it, if you've uh, built a house and really hadn't taken possession of it, if you've taken a wife but had not had time with her, uh, then you were to be allowed to go home. And it says that those that are fearful, who is the man in verse 8, who is afraid and tender of heart, let him go and return to his house, lest the heart of his brothers faint like his heart. So it is a given here that there are going to be continual wars that Israel will have to engage in. What is being described here, as you continue to read, where it says that when they take over a city or a country, that they are to strike every male in it with the edge of the sword, in verse 13. Only the women, the little ones, and then the livestock, they can take as plunder. It continues here, lest we misunderstand. Only of the cities, in verse 16, of these people which Yahweh your Elohim has given you as an inheritance, you do not keep alive any that breathe. So of all the ites, Perizzites, Hittites, uh, Gergeshites, and all of those ites in the land, Canaanites, they are not to be saved alive, not even one individual. They are to completely annihilate these people, lest they rise up and be a thorn in their side and a continual um, uh, adversary to them. Their, their way of life, their thinking, their, their hearts are totally against anything and everything that Israel is, kind of like uh, certain groups that are in and around the land of Israel to this day. Israel, likewise, modern Israel, is surrounded by those who seek their annihilation and will not tolerate them having one person, not one, in the land. None. So Israel has no choice but to make war against those who seek their demise. Now, going back to this situation, what people then are we talking about? We're, we're talking about uh, those countries that are beyond the first established borders of Israel. What this says to us then is that after Israel uh, has conquered the initial given borders that have been outlined for them in the wilderness, that there will be days of expansion Yah will, will stir up adversaries against Israel so that Israel will defend themselves, go into this offending nation, and conquering that, they would take their land. Uh, Modern-day warfare says, well, you can annihilate the enemy, but you can't take the land. you got to give that back. Uh, just, that's not fair. That's not right. Well, uh, that's that's the legitimate thing that in, in warfare that when you conquer territory, it's your territory. Now, this speaks to us then about our own particular warfare, and I'm not talking about you know with uh, handheld weapons and tanks and planes and such. We're talking about spiritual warfare in this regard, and. 
one thing that I have pulled out of this is that concerning those that are afraid. When we go into a spiritual battle, however it manifests, and we then begin to pray, we begin to look for scriptures that are supportive of our need, uh, teaching us how to cry out in this particular situation. We'll look in the Psalms and see where the psalmist may have likewise faced such adversaries and pray the prayers that the psalmist pray. And then we will listen to those who teach along the lines of whatever our issue is. And then, and this is important, we will begin to perhaps ask intercessors to stand with us in prayer. In this place, then, we cannot afford to allow fear to enter into the picture. It says uh, down in uh, verse number, uh, where is it at? I just read it. Verse 8. The officers speak to the people and say, who is the man uh, who is afraid and tender of heart? You don't want to be standing beside someone who is shaking in their boots and paralyzed in fear when your adversary is right on top of you. In this time and and age of warfare, it's all hand-to-hand combat. Yes, they deployed, I'm I'm sure, the... uh, Uh, the chariots and and cavalry of sorts, but mainly it's handheld weapons. In that space, you need someone fighting back to back with you. They guard your back while you guard theirs. Uh, If that person has turned and ran, then you're left vulnerable. We do not want to go into a protracted spiritual battle, shaking in our boots and full of fear because it paralyzes us in prayer. Neither do you want to invite intercessors that are going to be afraid. What would they be afraid of? Anytime you go into a protracted time of spiritual warfare, warring for your family members, for your community, for your city, for your congregation, for some loved one's health issue, uh, whatever the spiritual attack might be made made of, you don't want to invite those who be afraid of retaliation in the spirit. Do we think that just because we pray in the name of Yeshua that Hasatan doesn't retaliate, that uh, people won't rise up that we thought were supportive and, and speak out against us? It is not a given that because you are a man of Israel and that you are led by Yahweh and those that he has entrusted with leadership and military uh, tactics, that no man of Israel would ever die in battle. That's just simply not the case. He said, do not fear or tremble or be afraid before them. Yah is with you. He's going to fight for you, but you may die. For he says... If he planted a vineyard and not began to use it, let him also return to his house, lest he die in the battle. There are casualties. Not every uh, season of warfare comes out as we suppose that it might. There could be consequences. There could be casualties. There could be issues that arise out of it that though we win the battle, we may bear the scars. So then... Two things, choose wisely those that you ask to pray for and with you. You want someone who is a fellow warrior, a fellow soldier in faith and belief, and is resolute and is as committed to the righteous outcome as you are. Secondly, calm your own fears. You must be reliable when someone says, Will you pray with me? Will you help stand with me? A casual, yeah, I'll remember you in prayer. That's one thing. But locking arms and going into battle, that's something else. I want to lock arms with you for Shabbat. May Yah's presence be with you, guard you, inform you, enlighten you, thrill you, fill you. May you find extreme joy 
and uh, refreshing and his rest. Shabbat Shalom, and we'll see you again next week. 